most people, once they realize, you know, how neat it is, uh, you know, what, what level, to what level things are, now, they have no idea, you know, they just say, paint figures, well, they think little uh, porcelain, little figures you go by, and, I, you know, once they see what it is, and always ask me what I'm working on next. There can be only so many artists, and I've always been interested in art, so I've always liked figures part of it. I'm a physical therapist, so I, maybe the, I just didn't realize it, but maybe the human body's always been something I like, the dynamic, how it moves. I did grow up in France for about three years. My dad was in the service, so we went to all the museums. Got my influence of art, I think, from there. And, you know, it goes away when you're a teenager, but then uh, I still liked art. I just, you know, there's just other things to do. Finally, you know, you settle down and you're something else. You're not an artist. You're, you can't be, a, can't have a thousand history teachers, so you got to do something else. So this is an outlet, just like anybody else who would go paint landscapes or something. And I got back into it when I was like 19, 20 in college. And there were older guys that were in it then. <clears throat> and as we've gotten older, there are younger guys coming up, much like you guys, like we were. And most guys, after they get through with the college years, they get married and have a kid, they need to do something. So a lot of them come back to this if they built models before. And uh, you need something to do. It's a hobby and, you, you know, so in your home doing it so guys come back to it and I, it keeps going and there's so much out there now so many products out there it's hard for me to believe that the hobby's dying if it was dying we wouldn't see all that and all the kits all the figures that are being sculpt, sculpted now and the technology that's involved it's it's not dying it's gonna change a lot of times yeah sometimes I'm influenced by you know seeing a uh, something on the History Channel and I kind of get interested in it. But a lot of times that may have been how it, something may start for somebody that's new. But when you go to the shows and you see different kits out, there may not have been a movie you've recently seen, but the kit's so cool. So, you know, it just kind of feeds on itself. So you start getting, uh, you know, you see one cool kit, so you want to buy it and, and paint it. So, uh, you, you know, it, may not be anything that you really uh, thought about you'd ever paint a, a certain era or something, but it's such a cool figure that you get it. I used to just think about World War II only uh, when I first got into this, uh, seriously. And uh, I just found my, there's too many other cool things out there. My interest just grew, so by what I saw at the shows, going to the shows just expanded, uh, you know, my uh, knowledge of what was out there. My uh, fiance's always been uh, supportive of it. She thinks it's neat. You know, she'll go to the shows and look around, and she's met my friends, and she really enjoys them and enjoys their work, and she sees the next level that things can go to. And um, so I get a lot of support um, from her and my family. You know, they, they knew I liked drawing when I was younger, so they knew it was an outlet to do some artwork and, and uh and my interest in history and they uh, so they were always supportive of me doing that and really thought everything was uh, really neat and most people once they realize you know how neat it is uh, you know what what level to what level things are now they have no idea you know they just say paint figures well they think little uh, porcelain little figures you go by and I, you know, once I see what it is, and always ask me what I'm working on next. Even if you're staying within reality, think outside the box, go a little more with the shading, you know, what, instead of just following a paint chip or something like that and, and putting the color where it belongs and it looks nice and neat, go outside the box, maybe highlight, be brave and highlight more, think about more of the color or, or how can you make something different you know so it's just not like everyone else's think outside the box on how much further can you take your take the weathering and that's why you get the tanks the results today because somebody thought outside the box like that and you know just think that way and like i said I, i've got friends who would never you know that color is that color and that's what goes there i read the book and 
that's where it goes. That's and that's fine. You know, their models look nice, but they just don't have the wow, what we call the wow factor. So, well, that's what's the frustrating thing about reading a how-to book. I mean, it's good to get these ideas and everything, and then and that goes back maybe to thinking outside the box too. Okay, this isn't working exactly how he, his works for him. I'm doing the same thing, but maybe I need to do a, a, something a little different that makes it work for me, whether it's twitching, you know, pinky up as you put the paint on, or I don't know. Uh, for me, I think it was uh, stippling, finding a, 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 the right brush, a, a synthetic brush, usually the, the white ones that are so soft, that's where I get my nice blend. And it's that little thing I do, that little soft touch. So that brother-in-law who tries to paint, and he is so heavy-handed. Oh yeah, I am stippling. I am, and I mean he's jamming that brush. I mean, it, and to him he's gently, but his gently is not, not you know, it's spreading that paint everywhere, and he's not getting a nice little blend. You just, I mean, you can read all the books you want, but until you really do it and figure out what you need to do. Um, so it's that, la that little thing, Bill Horan going from here to his figure. And it's just that little thing he does, that little thing he does that makes him do what he does. And there's a guy who reads his technique and he takes his paint, his brush, and he does just exactly what Bill Horan, but he doesn't do that one little thing. And I don't know what it could be. And it's that one little thing that makes it work. Whatever you're interested in, whether it's models, uh, weathering, a tank, or figures, there's so much more out there now. Try to find a club or something and somebody that can actually uh, talk to you in person, but there is so much else out there too, on, you know, and so much more accessible uh, media-wise that wasn't there. I mean, some, now you can go and you can see all these techniques people are using and start immediately instead of you know, finding your way. And uh, I would just say, uh, don't be afraid. Go look things up, ask people. And as far as the figures are concerned, because uh, I'm more or less a more of a figure painter, uh, don't always buy, you know, the cheapest uh, kit. Uh, don't think that you're not going to be good enough to do a nice figure justice. Uh, it just doesn't work. Buy, buy the thing that, if you like it, buy it because you're you, that's what you want you you liked it and that will keep you going with it and it is hard to paint a bad figure even if you know like so you get something for five bucks but it's a horrible figure you will never make it as a especially as a beginner you'll never make it look you won't have that enthusiasm for it but if you start with a good figure a lot of things will fall in place <laughs> I'm Rick Rudder. He's a badass figure painter. <laughs> <laughs> there, got it.